You have the choice of where you'll spend eternity. When he was on that cross and he died for us and rose again on the third day, the price was paid for all of our sins, our past sins, our present sin, and our future sin. But he gives us a choice, and the choice is you can pay the price for your sin, and paying the price for the sin is you'll spend eternity in hell paying that price. But Jesus doesn't want anybody to pay that price. When Jesus went to the cross, Jesus lived the perfect life, and by dying on the cross, he paid your price for sin and my price for sin. So if we accept that free gift, our sins are covered by Jesus' blood, and we'll go to heaven. We'll spend eternity with Jesus, and that's an awesome thing, a perfect place. Where is the place that you have felt most at home? Is it your own home? Maybe it was a relative or a friend's home. Did you know that Jesus is now preparing a place in his home for those who believe? If you put your faith in Jesus Christ, you'll spend eternity in a heavenly home, a perfect place without sin, illness, or war. Today we're wrapping up our week-long radio revival. We'll be hearing from Mark Weber. He'll be reminding us of the perfect home waiting for us. Join us now for his message entitled, Going Home to the Promised Land. Okay, tonight we're going to talk about going home to the promised land. And we're going to apply this to our lives as we look through some scripture this evening. So before we get started, we're going to pray, and then we'll get right into scripture. Dear Lord, we thank you that these uh, next minutes, Lord, that we can focus on you, Lord, with all the things going on around the world, Lord, that we can just take this quiet time, we can sit back, we can listen to your scripture, Lord, and we can... um, Uh, learn from what you have to say to us, Lord. Lord, we ask the Holy Spirit guide us as we go through these verses, Lord. And Lord, we also ask that you open our hearts and you prepare our hearts to hear the message that you have for each one of us this evening, Lord. And the awesome thing is that a relationship with Jesus is personal to each person. So, you are going to receive a message personally from Jesus, Lord, with your relationship with him. And that's an awesome thing. And we lift all these prayers in the precious name of your son, Jesus. Amen. So we're going to go back 3,500 years, and we're going to look at Moses as he's traveling with the Israelites in the wilderness. So he was traveling with the, the Israelites in the wilderness for 40 years. And it was actually from the exodus from Egypt, but it was actually a 13-day trip But uh, the people weren't prepared prepared spiritually for that trip, so it was a 40-year journey. So into this 40-year journey near the end, and the people would complain often throughout this journey, and just imagine Moses leading two million people and all the complaints that he had to hear over these years. So it came, they were almost ready um, at the end of that 40 years to go into the promised land, and they were thirsty, they were low on water. Okay, so Moses prayed to God, and God told Moses to speak to a rock, and the water would come out of the rock. So God was not angry with the people. He was just asking Moses to speak to this rock. And then we look in Numbers 2010, and Moses and Aaron gathered the assembly together before the rock, and he said to them, Hear now, you rebels, must we bring water to you out of this rock? Then Moses lifted his hand and struck the rock twice with his rod, and water came out abundantly, and the congregation and their animals drank. So we look at this. You know, Moses was representing God as he was talking to the people, and God didn't mean to be angry to the people, but as Moses, through his frustration, he showed a great anger to the people. So as the people were coming to the end of their journey through the desert wilderness, they were together on the east side of the Jordan River, and the promised land was going across the river. So they were preparing to cross the river into the promised land. So we're going to look at a verse in Deuteronomy 31.1. Then Moses went and spoke these words to all Israel, and he said to them, I am 120 years old today. I can no longer go out and come in. Also, the Lord has said to me, you shall not cross over the Jordan. 
Okay, so Moses, in all this journey, he was not allowed to cross over into the Jordan. Okay, he was allowed. God did allow him to climb up to Mount Nebo and view the promised land from there. And that's really a beautiful sight if you ever get a chance to, to see on top of Mount Nebo. If, on a clear day, you could really see all of Israel. So in the wilderness, while the people were in the wilderness, Moses brought the Ten Commandments of God to the people, okay, and he called them the Ten Commandments. The purpose of the law was to hold a mirror to the people and to ourselves. So when we look at the law, and we're going to go over the law here as we look at it, it's a mirror to, to hold that uh, to God's standard. So the Ten Commandments here, uh, you shall have no other God besides me. You shall not make yourself a carved image and bow down to them and serve them. You shall not take the name of the Lord in vain. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Honor your father and mother that your days may be long upon the land. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house and possessions. So these were the laws that Moses brought to the people that God gave to Moses carved them in the rock, and gave them uh, to Moses to give to the people. So if we look at verses in James, okay, James says, For whoever shall keep the whole law and yet stumble in one point, he is guilty of all. For he who said, Do not commit adultery, also said, Do not murder. Now if you do not commit adultery, but you do murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So what James was saying here, to break one of the commandments is to break the whole law. Okay, and, and Jesus explains this further in Matthew. You have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder, and whoever murders will be in danger of the judgment. But I say to you that whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whoever says to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council, but whoever says you fool shall be in danger of hell's fire. Okay, so Jesus explains here that our thoughts of anger can just be like murder. So those, those laws that we looked at that Moses brought down, we, go, you know, we can all see that you know, murdering is wrong, but what Jesus is saying is you, if you're actually angry at somebody without cause, that is considered murder. All right, so your thoughts also count. So when, how do you compare to the law when you include all your thoughts? So let's take a look at these commandments again. All right, so if we look at the commandments again, you know, we, we look down, we see you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal. But even your thoughts about these can be considered sin. So when we look at the Ten Commandments, the Ten Commandments were never made to show how righteous we are. They were made to show how sinful, sinful we are, all right? So let's take a look at about 1,400 years later, and we see Jesus with the disciples. Jesus takes Peter, James, and John up on a high mountain, and this we can read in Matthew 17. And it says, Now after six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, led them up on a high mountain by themselves, and he transfigured before them, his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, talking with him. So the disciples saw this. So as we look at Moses, Moses was not allowed to enter the promised land living by the law. But here we see, 14, 1,400 years later, Moses with Jesus in the promised land, and uh, they're talking. So as we go to, um, as we go to uh, a new birth in John, you know, we have to remember that, you know, we're not saved by the law, but we're saved with a Savior. So John 3.1 says, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So Nicodemus was confused by this statement of Jesus. As we look at this, we all go through a physical birth. You know, we all have our birthdays. We know the exact date we were born. 
So this is our first birth. With our first birth, we are born from Adam. What comes with this birth is the sin of Adam. So you can look at an example of this. If you look at your, uh, your, your children or if you have, you know, children in the family, if you look at them and, and you take your own children, you never have to teach your children to misbehave. You, they'll just do that normally. They'll, there's no training. It's just like a natural thing for, uh, for children to misbehave or do things that they're not supposed to do. It takes a lot of effort and time and teaching to teach your children to do the right things, to be, to be polite to other people, to, to train them in a way that is, uh, is, um, is pleasing to the Lord, okay? An example of this, okay, let's go. Okay, so as Jesus is talking about the second birth, it's a spiritual birth, Okay, so we have our physical birth, we can date that, but then Jesus is also talking about a spiritual birth, and the spiritual birth is the important part that needs to happen in order to go to heaven. So let's look at John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So God love is so great for us that he gave it all for us. You know, when he sent Jesus here, he held nothing back. He gave everything for us. So as Jesus was here for a short amount of time, at the end of that time, uh, his ministry about three years, at the end of that time, uh, Jesus went to the cross. And we'll look at these verses in John 19. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. Now a vessel full of sour wine was sitting there, and they filled a sponge with sour wine, put it in hyssop, and put it to his mouth. So when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. So Jesus lived a perfect life, and then he willingly went to the cross and on the third day, he rose from the grave and conquered death. So when Jesus says, what is finished? He, when he says finished, what does finished mean? The, finished means that he, he paid the price for all of our sins. When he was on that cross and he died for us and rose again on the third day, the price was paid um, for all of our sins, our past sins, our present sin, and our future sin. But he gives us a choice. You know, and the choice is you can pay the price for your sin or, and paying the price for the sin is you'll spend eternity in hell paying that price. So that's one of the prices you can pay, but Jesus doesn't want anybody to pay that price. So what God provided when, he, when Jesus went to the cross, Jesus lived the perfect life, and by dying on the cross, he paid your, your uh, price for sin and my price for sin. So if we accept that free gift, our sins are covered uh, by Jesus' blood, and we'll go to heaven. We'll spend eternity with, with Jesus, and that's an awesome thing, a perfect place. So accept the gift of the cross that Jesus paid in full for your sin, and your sin is covered by the blood of Jesus. It is a free gift, and all you have to do is accept the gift. Okay, so let me give in a personal example. You know, when I accepted Jesus, I was in, in my 30s, so it wasn't right away. It was a little um, into, uh, you know, into my life. I was a young man, and I accepted Jesus as my Savior, I didn't know all the answers, you know. I actually had a lot of questions, but the one thing I did know, I did know uh, Jesus was, was God. I did know I need a Savior because I knew I had sin in my life, and I knew that Jesus pray, paid the price for my sin. So those are the things I knew with all the other questions I had, so I jumped out on faith, and I accepted Jesus as my Savior, you know. And before I accept Jesus as my Savior, periodically I would go open up my Bible, and I'd read the words in Scripture. But, you know, it never really made sense. And I was wondering, how can people read the Bible so long, and they're so interested in it? 
But when I accepted Jesus as my Savior, all the answers or all the questions that I had about, about Jesus, he started to answer for me. So now I could read the scripture with the Holy Spirit and the answers would come. You know, some took some years to come, but they would always come, come one by one. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, have, um, we're going to pray. So wherever you are, you're sitting at your home or wherever you are, I'm going to offer up this prayer. And if you'd like to pray with me sitting in your home or wherever you're at, we can ask Jesus into our heart, just like I did this so many years ago. If you've already asked Jesus into your heart, uh, you can pray again, or you can um, uh, continue to pray for those that haven't. So it's a very simple prayer. Jesus didn't make anything difficult about going to heaven. It's a very simple prayer. So as we pray, we say, Lord Jesus, um, I thank you for going to the cross and paying that price for my sin, Lord. I repent for my sin, and I accept you as my Savior, Lord. Lord, I ask you to come into my life, Lord. I ask you to take control of my life, Lord, and, and guide me, Lord. And I lift you as my Savior, Lord. And I thank you for uh, going to the cross and paying the price of my sin, Lord. And I lift these prayers in the name of Jesus. Now, folks, that's a, that's a simple, simple prayer. It's not a complicated prayer. And you do that in your heart, you know, and you're going to be saved. You know, and you're going to go to heaven and, and be in that tremendous place for all eternity, Lord. And that's an awesome thing. So, you know, you're, you, here are your choices. You know, you can um, pay the price yourself, which is going to hell for eternity, or you can accept the free gift that Jesus gives, and he paid the price for you. So Jesus doesn't want anybody to go to hell. You'll actually send yourself there if you don't accept the gift of, of Jesus. So why won't people, if you're sitting home right now, you know, when you haven't said that prayer, you have some questions, like why? It seems like such an easy thing to do. You know, do you want to go to hell? Do you want to go to heaven? You know, everybody wants to go to heaven, so why don't you accept Jesus as your Savior? Well, let's look at this. If we look at the, uh, at the Israelites coming out from Egypt, it was a 13-day journey to the promised land. But spiritually, they weren't ready. They were in slavery for over 400 years. And spiritually, they weren't ready to enter the promised land. So it was a 40-year journey for them till they were actually ready to enter the promised land. Okay, if we look and we apply that to our lives, we've, we've lived a life of sin because we're born of Adam. We've lived a life of sin. Why does it take us so long to come before Jesus? And, and what it is, it's humbleness. It's humility before Jesus, before the God, before the creator of the universe. It's our proud, not willing to humble to our creator that keeps us from those simple little words that will save our life. That's all it is. So if you're sitting there home today and you said, well, maybe someday, we don't know how many, we don't know how long we have. Each one of us, we don't know how long we have. That day could come any time. So you don't want to wait. You want to accept Jesus and humble yourself to do that and ask Jesus to reveal himself to you. Okay, so as you are, as you do, if you did accept Jesus, congratulations, that's an awesome thing. Now, I'll tell you what, when you, after you accept Jesus, it doesn't mean your life is going to be easy. It doesn't mean you're not going to have any problems. You're going to have the you're going to have problems. Life is still going to be challenging. But this is what it's like accepting Jesus. So imagine a hurricane, all the hurricane, all the things are going on. With Jesus, he gives you a peace. It's almost like walking in the eye of the hurricane. You know, there, whatever's going on around you, you have that peace in your heart, you know, and that's a gift of the Holy Spirit. That's a gift that G Jesus gives you from accepting him as Savior. So whatever life things you're going to go through, and they're still going to happen, there's still going to be things are going to go on, but you're going to have a peace as you go through um, your daily activities, your weekly activities. Things are going to happen, but you're going to have a peace, and people are going to see the difference in you, and that's the rebirth, the spiritual rebirth, you know, that peace. All right, so let's look at... Um, Matthew 28, 19. Okay, so now some of you listening out there, you said, yeah, I am a believer. I've been a believer for years. And, 
You know, there's others that have just come to Jesus tonight and accepted him as your Savior, and that's an awesome thing, but that's just the beginning. So with that prayer, with accepting Jesus as your Savior, you're going to go to heaven. You're definitely going to go to heaven, but you're also just starting your journey here, you know, because we still are here for a period of time. So as we look in Matthew 28, 19, this is what Jesus says to his disciples. He says, go there for and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So Jesus says, go and make disciples. So what is a disciple? Okay, now you're now saved, but Jesus is saying, now go and make disciples of all nations. So a disciple is learning the Word of God and learning the Word of God verse by verse. Okay, so we have a couple uh, uh, thoughts here that we're going to look at. So what is being a disciple? How can you be a disciple or how can you learn from the Word of God. One thing is to read Scripture and pray, all right? Okay, so read Scripture and pray. And what what I mean with pray, you know, I mean talking to Jesus all the time. You know, when you're in your car, you can talk to Jesus. Jesus doesn't want to only hear the big things in, in your life. He wants to hear the little things. He wants to hear everything about your life because He loves you so much. You know, and if you ever have a question about how much he loves you, just look at the cross, you know, and just think what he did from you. But Jesus wants prayers also like you, you're, you're buying a card for somebody. Jesus, what card should I buy them? What card would touch their heart? All the little things Jesus wants to hear about those things. Read scripture and pray. Attend church weekly. Now, we're in a situation, an unusual time in a sense, the pandemic and different uh, uh, activities, so it's much easier to watch from home. But it's very important to also be with the, the uh, body of believers. Just imagine if someone tonight accepted Jesus and they're so excited, and they're going to go to church this Sunday the first time, maybe years. Maybe they've never even been in a church. And they get to church, and everybody's home watching. There's no one here, or there's very few people here. There's no one to talk to. There's no one to connect with. So being in church is, is uh, very important. Now, if you're out of the, out of the um, mode of going to church... Here's a couple of things that, um, that will help. I know it's, it's helped people that I've talked to. It's helped me, you know, focus on getting to church three times, in a, three times in a row, four times in a row. Just focus on that three times in a row, four times in a row. Once you get to those three times, four times in a row, it's going to start to become a habit. And then the other thing you can do is schedule everything else around attending church. So write in your book for next week, okay, church, I'm going to be there 8 o'clock, church, I'm going to be there 9 30, or church, I'm going to be there at 11. Whatever time your church starts, write that on your calendar. That's your number one thing. You know, that's your number one thing, and now put in other things around that. Just make it a priority. Because it's an, it's, a, it's, it's an awesome thing, and God's going to speak to you through this scripture that you hear at church. Pick a Bible study to attend. You know, pick a, if you have a local Bible study that you can go to that goes verse by verse through Scripture, pick a Bible study to attend. And then be a doer of the Word, okay? So what's a doer of the Word? You know, um, God tells us to disciple people. We share the gospel with people, invite somebody to church. Uh, You can hand out a tract. You know, even if you give... If you give an encouragement to somebody, you don't know what that person is going through in that day. And if you're standing in the grocery line and you can just talk to that person, give them a little bit of encouragement, you know, because probably there's very few people that do that today and they're going to notice right off that something's different about you. But give that person a little bit of encouragement, encouragement in their, in their day and their activities. Maybe it'll lead to, you know, more talking about Jesus, but encourage people. Okay, so do you, do, you ever, do you ever feel disconnected from Jesus? Do you ever feel like you pray and you just don't hear from Jesus anymore? Do you ever feel like that? You know, sometimes we're going to go through periods like that where we just, we seem like we just don't feel Jesus is there. And, you know, when you get to those situations... 
you know, take a deep breath and go back and read Scripture and look at Jesus on the cross. And anytime you're in a situation like that, go back to the cross, you know, and look at what Jesus did for you. And His love is so great for you that He gave everything for you. And look at that cross and then think, you know, am I praying as much as I did before? Am I reading Scripture? I used to read every day. Do I read Scripture as much? You know, maybe Jesus is always there, but I'm just not, um, I'm just not reading. I'm not praying to Jesus. Maybe he's there waiting for me to pray. He's listening for me to pray. If I start to pray, if I start to read Scripture, it'll change, it'll change your life. So I want you this evening, okay, to look, if you get a chance, um, you get a chance to go outside. If it's a clear, clear night, you know, I want you to look up in the heavens. You know, look at all the stars you can see, you know, everything that you can see. If there's millions and millions of stars, millions of galaxies, um, take in of all God's creation and just look at that. And think that the God that created all that, now he created that in a day, okay? It wasn't difficult for God to do that. It wasn't difficult for him to do that. He created all that, but he went to the cross for you. And you know, if you were the only person on earth, he would still go to that cross for you. He would die for you. He would give it all for you because he loves you. He loves you that much. So I'd like to finish with a prayer, and uh, I'd like to, uh, well, we'll finish this with a prayer. Dear Lord, we uh, thank you that we can um, read Scripture, learn about you, Lord. We, uh, we thank you for working in our lives, Lord. We thank you for guiding us, Lord. We pray for all the new believers that accept Jesus tonight, Lord. And, Lord, we know we don't have that much time, Lord. We know you're coming back soon, Lord. Help us to read Scripture. Help us to invite neighbors and friends to church. Help us to talk about you, Lord. Help us to pray more, Lord. Help us to look to you, Lord. Get, guide us as we meet people each day. Help us to listen when we need to listen and speak when we need to speak, Lord. And help us to share the good news about you, especially today when you hear so much negative news or so much turmoil going on. There is some great news out there, and the great news is that you went to the cross for us, and you paid the price, the total price for us. And then if we repent from our sins and accept you as Savior that we'll be able to spend eternity with you in heaven, that perfect place. And remember when you told the disciples 2,000 years ago, you were going home to prepare a place for them, to prepare mansions for them. And that's 2,000 years, Lord. And when we look up in the sky, Lord, and we see your creation uh, in a day, all creation in six days, Lord, and you're going home to prepare a place for us 2,000 years, it's going to be an awesome place, Lord, and we just thank you for that. So I pray for everybody that accepted Jesus this evening, Lord, and congratulations to you. That's an awesome thing, Lord, but your journey is just starting. You're definitely going to heaven, but your journey is just starting. Find a church that, uh, that goes verse by verse through Scripture. Start studying your Bible and taking time to pray to Jesus and talk to him. And we thank you, Lord, and we lift all these prayers in the precious name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. You're listening to Mark Weber in our final message in our radio revival. We hope you enjoyed it, and if so, we'd like to hear your thoughts. You can email us through our website at ccleb.com. Include your prayer request, too. That's a great place to listen to more great Bible teaching. That's ccleb.com. You'll also find us on YouTube at Calvary Chapel Lebanon. You can also call us at 717-273-5633. Again, our phone number is 717-273-5633. Thanks again for joining us for our radio revival. May God richly bless you and strengthen you. This program is brought to you by Calvary Chapel, Lebanon, Pennsylvania. 